Design AI have now released a powerful tool that'll very easily allow you to have multiple consistent characters in the images that you generate. This means you can train up a number of characters and add them into your images all with a few clicks. Now, if you wanna check out Design AI for yourself, there's a link in the description and they are the sponsor of this video. So the way it works is I'm logged in here. I have a project, new fresh canvas, and I'm gonna come over here to character. Now, when I click on this, I have a few different options. Now, first of all, if you don't know how to create a character, first of all, it's gonna to go to consistent character. And of course I can choose a character because there are existing characters here. I can also add a new character. So I click on that, I can give it a name. I call it Pixar Samurai. And I have this image I've created in a previous video. I'm gonna drag him into this section here. And you can see it says I can add one to 30 images. Obviously the more images, the better. But for this process, we're gonna stick with one simple image and I'm gonna hit train. I give it 30 or 40 minutes to go through and train that character. But perhaps the better method is to come over here to character and go to character sheet. And I can choose a similar style. So I'm gonna choose the style of character. I'm going to stick with design 3D render and I'm gonna create a character to kind of go with my samurai, such as a Pixar style 3D shell and monk, bald wearing orange robes. Very similar to another video I've done in the past yet again. So this time I hit generate and you see on the right over here, we get two different images. This one probably fits the proportions better to go with our samurai. So what I can do is I can come here to build character one or two. Since I prefer number two, I can also add a variation if I wanna see something a little different or even enhance an upscale. But for now, I'm gonna build character two, give my character a name, I'll call it Pixar Monk. I'm gonna click train and it will now start training my samurai monk character. Keep in mind, this does take about half an hour or so, and you'll have to wait until after you train your first character to start training your second character. But this is a good example of how we can upload images for one, or we can generate a character sheet, which has a few different angles to use for another character design. So there's two different ways we can train our characters. But let's skip ahead. So now you can see both our characters have been created. So now if I choose one, to create a scene. I have a Pixar Samurai. It's got a bit of a description of the character. There's some automatic prompts. I can fill out a prompt here. For now, I'm gonna stick with one of these automated prompts. Hit generate. And now our images have been generated. Now what's really cool is this one on the left, he's slightly off center. So this could be a good one to use the video on. But you'll notice there's a section here that says insert character. If I click on one, it'll place it on the canvas and it wants me to mask the area I want to place my character. So I can use the lasso tool to kind of draw that spot in, or I can switch to a brush. So I can draw with the brush, or even I can auto select if there's a character in there to replace. We'll look at that in a little while soon. For now, I'll stick with this. I can invert the selection to pop it anywhere, but that spot, I can even just clear the whole thing and I can change the stroke size of the brush. So if I wanna get really quick or if I wanna get really fine, I can make smaller brush size. But I'm gonna choose my character as the Pixar monk. And he is also just gonna be walking. I'll pop the same one in there in the quiet park, um, swinging gently. I'm going to just remove some of this. I'm gonna hit generate. So I can pick one of these two images and it previews it on the page. It looks better when he's a little shorter. So I double click. And now we have our canvas image with both characters in the scene. But we're not just stuck with this method. There's another way we can add characters in. But now let's try something a little bit different. What happens if I go into my character settings? Consistent character. This time I choose the monk. And in the prompt I say, Pixar monk and another warrior character are walking past a fire. So this time I'm actually going to pop two characters into the scene. I've set to canvas size, which is 16 to nine. I click generate. And again, I have two images. I think this one looks the best, so I'll add it to the canvas. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So I have my image on the canvas and maybe I wanna do a little bit more with it. Maybe I decide I want to bring it down, bring it in here, get AI, generative expand. It's gonna say extend background, fire, generate. I'm gonna choose this one. 
So I've actually made an edit and I can make other edits to it. And now that we have our image here, we're going to replace this character. But we can't just move from here because we've added a generative expand to these images and maybe we have other elements. So what I'm going to do is just simply leave this on the canvas, come over to character, insert character, and I can use auto to select this guy and slowly select portions of him. I just click and click until I get it. But our camera is not this exact shape. So we do want to add with our brush a little bit of space around it. But this can be a great way to start. And there's also another use for it, which I'm going to share in a minute. So we've got a space here for our samurai. I'm going to choose our character, Pixar Samurai, and I'm just going to hit Generate. And now we have our options. I double click and I add it to the canvas. So we've been able to add our samurai. Now, if I want to make him taller, I could select a bit more and do the process again. But for now, it sort of shows you how you can replace characters in the scene. But there's a few other things we can do with this feature besides just adding multiple characters. I mean, for one, what I can do is even add more characters. So if I want to insert a character and instead this time I click here, maybe I choose Lip Boy, I get my brush and I paint like a little spot here just in front of the fire. I can have Lip Boy, Lip Boy looking up at the sky, hit generate. And now we have our two versions of Lip Boy looking up at the sky. I like the idea of him turning off to one side, so I'll double click and I can continue to add characters to this scene. But also something a little bit different. Let's say I drag a photo in so we can add characters into photographs or images we've taken elsewhere. Now I do want to crop the canvas just a little bit. At the moment we're at a custom resolution. I'm going to unlink these, make it about 1300 tall. Bring this up. So I've got this really grand temple here. Maybe I want our samurai here or our Shaolin monk. So again, Character, insert character, choose character, Pixar Monk. But this time I'm going to say, I have Pixar Monk is standing with feet wide apart, fists up in boxing pose, ready to fight, looking mean, Kung Fu style, martial arts pose. Again, I'm going to get my brush and I would kind of like to see him here. I'm even going to leave a little space underneath him. Not much. I'm going to try and just give him a space here to pop the our character. He's in position, I hit generate, and we have two options, and we're able to place our monk in the scene in front of the temple. Now these two image styles don't really match, but it does show you how well it's managed to blend the two. But what happens if we try something a little different? I drag this photograph of a woman in, move across, and again, we go into our character, insert character, I'm gonna get my brush, bring that size up, and just paint a section here for a character or a friend to basically be generated. But I don't want to cut into the woman herself. So I'm gonna to go to auto here, and this is another use for these tools, is move to unselect. So now if I click, it neatly unselects for certain areas and allows me to create a nice neat cutout. Now I could have just selected the background with this particular image, but some images are not that simple. If you have a detailed background, it can actually be easier to do it this way. So I thought I'd demonstrate with that. But I'm going to choose my character and I'm going to go for a preset character, this time starting with Anna. And I'm going to say Anna, Anna is smiling and posing for a photo shoot, standing behind another person. I hit generate and over here we have two different versions of Anna. I'll add this one and she's been added into the scene next to this other woman and it looks pretty much like an actual photo. So this is a pretty cool tool. It allows you to not only simply add a character onto an existing image, but allows you to add more than one consistent character to an image. You can do this to your AI generated images or to photos you upload. Or if you're creating your own characters, this can be a great way to add them into photographs. And it's just a really powerful tool as you take a little bit more control over where you're placing your consistent characters, as opposed to simply generating images, you can pop them anywhere you want to with a little bit more control. But circling back to this image here, we've got our three characters in a scene, consistent characters we've created. As always, this means we can use these consistent characters in a video. So again, I've got AI video. I'm gonna go with standard this time, and I'm gonna simply write a description. Three characters walking away from a fire and toward the camera, slowly panning back. I hit generate, and we've been able to create this video using the Kling 
featuring our three consistent characters. So that is a very, very powerful tool for putting more characters into your scenes and it really simplifies the whole process. So instead of just generating characters, you have more control over where you can place them. So I highly recommend checking out Design AI if you want to have a play with this for yourself. It is a really, really powerful tool, an excellent editor added to, it's not just a simple AI generator, but the editor is a really powerful tool. So check it out, there's a link in the description. Otherwise, that is the video for today, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.